Building up a collection of filmmaking equipment can be really expensive. Not only do you have to shell out on a camera body, but then on top of that you've got things like lighting equipment, stands, a tripod, monitors, and then you're probably going to need something to edit on too. But one of the most important things that dictates your image is of course the lens that you pick. We're living in a world where the choices are endless. Prime lenses, zoom lenses, cinema lenses, vintage lenses. It can really be a bit of a minefield when trying to decide where to put your money. We're currently being spoiled with insanely high spec cameras and super sharp lenses, but perhaps you're looking for a lens that has a bit more character and gives you a look that's a little bit different. So a really good option for you could be using a vintage lens, maybe something like this Canon FD 50mm 1.8. I really love this lens and so much so that I ended up buying the 28mm equivalent. So the footage that you're watching right now is shot with both of these lenses and as you can see it's a bit of a softer image the highlight roll off is quite nice and yeah the bokeh looks a little bit different as well so with these lenses setting you back around about 50 pounds each and then the adapter costing around about 30 pounds i think this is a really good option for people who want to start shooting with prime lenses but also if you enjoy the characteristics of vintage glass you can get that in your footage really affordably so for the last 18 months i've pretty much exclusively only shot with the sony 24 to 70 g master lens it's been perfect for the type of work that i've been doing lately and paired with the tiffin black promos filter it gives me an image that I'm really happy with. It's great having an aperture of 2.8 all the way through so I can shoot at different focal lengths and then it's just really versatile when I'm doing run and gun style shooting. However, I did find myself recently wanting to shoot with cinema lenses, especially things like the DZO Vespid Primes. However, these lenses are over £1,000 each, so to get a little collection of these is a huge investment and even though it's my job, it's a really big decision. So I started looking around on YouTube as I always do watching different people's work and I noticed that a lot of people are starting to use their vintage glass not only for their personal work and for experimental shoots but with their clients as well. So I thought why not try it myself. So shooting on a Sony a7S III I paired these lenses with the KNF FD to E-mount adapter and then on the front I've used a step up ring so that allows me to use my variable ND filter and that's pretty much it. So the setup is ridiculously light and obviously with the Sony, you've got the in-body stabilization, which will help. But I would definitely recommend, if you can, try and add some weight to the camera build. You can obviously use a follow focus system with these lenses, but I've personally just been pulling them manually. So I recently shot with these lenses as well on a trip to Italy and it was really fun walking about the city with a little camera set up that barely weighed anything. I loved how low profile it was and it really allowed me to walk around the city and get on public transport without everyone looking at me. So it's really nice to travel with these lenses because clearly they're not very big at all and they don't weigh anything either. So yeah, it's really nice to have those in your backpack compared to when you've got a huge G Master lens that costs 10, 20 times as much. So I think it's probably a good idea to do a comparison so you can see the footage using a vintage lens next to a modern one. So I don't have prime lenses to compare the footage to and I will be using a zoom lens, but I imagine there'll be a lot of people who are considering buying vintage glass who primarily shoot on zoom lenses. So hopefully it's still helpful. So with both of these shots, I've got the same ND filter on the front. So on this first shot of this house plant, you can definitely see a difference in color but the image quality absolutely holds up. The bokeh is a little different and it looks pretty nice. So yeah, I would say it definitely holds up. So looking at the second example, you can definitely see where the Promus filter is helping with my skin and the highlights in general, but generally not a million miles uh, difference between the two images. Definitely a slightly different look for the Canon lens, but at the end of the day, it's still pretty sharp. It's a good image. And when you think about the price difference, yeah, even I'm quite surprised owning these lenses for a little while now. I'm quite surprised to see them side by side um, and seeing how they hold up. I would say that even if you're working with clients, these lenses can offer you something that's a little bit different that your client might actually quite like. But if not, if you're thinking about passion project or something a little bit more stylized, then they could be really useful. I think anyone who's shooting with primarily zoom lenses who would like to have some primes but not breaking the bank at the same time, then that's probably quite a good shout. I would also say if you're a beginner and you've got your first camera and you're not too bothered about things like autofocus, this is a really affordable way to get into photography and film. Something that I quite like about these lenses as well is the fact that it's quite a low risk option considering whatever you've bought them for on eBay, 
you'll probably just make that back again because the depreciation of the product has kind of already happened in the last 40, 50 years. So yeah, it's quite low risk. You can buy them, shoot for a bit, maybe even a year or two, sell them probably for what you bought them for. Another thing that I didn't mention is photography. These lenses will pair up with your stills camera and look pretty great for that too. For me, they pretty much live on my 35 mm camera and then whenever I wanna shoot video with them, take them off, put the adapter on and stick it on the same. With these lenses being so old, there obviously will be a few that have seen better days. So it's probably worth paying a little bit extra to try and find the ones with no dust in or any fungus. Again, there will be quirks when it comes to using these lenses. So you probably will need to buy a step up ring if you want to use things like an ND filter or diffusion filters. If you're working with clients, it's probably not very sensible to solely rely on lenses like this, but I do think they're a great addition to any filmmaker's kit. And personally, I love using them and they pretty much come on every single shoot now because they're so small, I might as well. Thank you for watching as always and I'll see you next time. Cheers.